Hello everyone and welcome back to Cloud Matsuri. We're almost done with the event, but don't go away because we still have some really good stuff for you to close out the show. Um, coming up after this, we have our extended Revolutionary Girl Utena panel, which is absolutely not to be missed. Uh, but before that, we have another Anime Limited industry panel. Uh, my name is Andy Hanley. I'm the marketing manager of Anime Limited, but I'm not the star of the show here because you are here to see the CEO of Anime Limited, Mr. Andrew Partridge. How are you doing, Andrew? I'm doing great. Like an oh, you flattering me. <laughs> is is what is what I'm what I'm paid to do. Um, so I um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess um, for for people watching, the main thrust of this panel is going to be a Q and A session where you get to ask Andrew anything that you like. I mean, please like keep it above the waist, but uh, mm -hmm. in theory, anything that you like. Um, so please start thinking of, of your questions, dropping them in the YouTube chat. Or you can drop us a message on Twitter, just use the hashtag CloudMatsuri, and we will collect questions and ask them after this brief chat. So uh, what are you thinking of stuff, though? Um, Andrew, I guess this is an important thing to, to talk about in terms of kind of Anime Limited this year. You know, we've started releasing products in the US, which is quite a big change of focus for us. So it's probably worth talking a little bit about what we're doing with the American market, why we're doing it, and, and so on and so forth. Yes, I mean, it's kind of twofold just now. The first thing we, we started doing really was working with vinyl music. And like, honestly, when you produce like something like a vinyl, it's not like like home video where it is region coded. It makes more sense to work across more territories than than one because it's, you know, there's a there's a wider market. So we've started working with people like Right Stuff, Mondo, FYE and beyond to like to deliver that music kind of in a wider market in the US. We're working across France, Germany and other territories in Europe as well, like to spread it there. It's it's really important to us to, to bring it to as many people as possible. But we've also started doing like what we, like taking our brand of home video release to the US market as well. So stuff like Be The Beginning, like and like coming up with Bartender as well as My My Miracle, we've all brought to the USA recently, like in the last year. And it's been kind of a an experiment for us to get the like the workflow underway and to make sure that we we've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's before we we start doing anything more. But we would like like we'd like to bring more of what we do to the US market. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I mean, obviously, Be The Beginning in particular is an, an interesting one. You know, it's it's an ultimate edition release. It has a massive art book, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, it's it's a really cool kind of uh, edition of a very cool Netflix show um, with season two coming out on Netflix soon. You know, you might want to to get in on that and give it a look. Uh, Bartender is, is a really fun, uh, uh, very kind of unique show that I, I know is, is, uh, is a big personal favourite of, of yours, Andrew. So, I mean, it, I'm really excited to, to see what the US audience make of, of that one as well. I'm a huge fan of the original manga of Bartender as well, actually, and like the Japanese version. It's really, I don't even translate it, actually, as I recall. But like, it's like, it's one of those ones where, like, it's just, it's the stories about alcohol. So my, any reading skill I have is very alcohol focused, apparently, as it turns out. Um, but yeah, like, Bartender is almost a more classic example of what we do at Anime Limited than Be The Beginning. Is Be The Beginning, every time we do an, you know, we maybe do one, anywhere between one and three ultimate editions in a year maximum out of a total of over, like, you know, 100 to 110 SKUs in a year like for us so it's like it's a very isolated example of like kind of the, the maximum when we have enough material to do something crazy and we really want to so like be the beginning it made sense to make a really nice art book for it because it's a, a netflix original it's got an amazing story behind it and the materials were all there to to make something that gave you that extra value but it's like it's very much out with our normal pricing band for titles normally we we focus on on kind of a like a mid-range accessible point like bartender basically on it where you get the series and something something extra to it like rest like the recipe cards were a nice change from the normal for us but we're we're big fans here of print-based content like books uh, like books booklets like anything which like is normally missing from a release basically and it's only just starting to change now from what i've seen like where people are actually taking full advantage of the, like the print data they're getting from Japan, you know? 
And that was a problem. That's what started this all in the UK because the UK market until, honestly, until Anime Limited was predominantly, if it was a collector's edition, you got a nice box, maybe some, some random goodies, but the print media was always left out. It was always either a standard edition, sell them high, sell them cheap, pre-simulcast, or it was like kind of random gubbins in there, which were cool, but like there's just a lot of context which has always been missed out on releases. So it's been a real pleasure re-releasing titles as well. But, you know, I may have worked on a Bandai and not had the opportunity to do that with as well. So it's not, it was an industry-wide situation with the UK before, like before us really. And it's been really refreshing to bring a, a taste of that like further now as well. And like that, our exact unique brand of it, you know? Mm. So, I mean, obviously it's, it's been very much kind of the, the early steps for us during 2020. Is, is there anything you can tease people with in terms of what we can expect for, for, for the US market specifically in, in 2021? Well, we, we have some vinyl releases for starters, um, some of which are based on shows like people are familiar with from us already, some of which are ones where we may not have a home video rights just now, but we love the soundtrack from from watching it on platforms like Netflix, for example. Um, on the home video frontier, we do have some surprises as well coming up, but it's a little bit too early to talk about them yet, but it's safe to say that Bartender in January won't be our only title for the year in the US market. Mm, let's watch this space, folks. So, I mean, talking about vinyl, you know, obviously we've released some, some really iconic soundtracks thus far. Um, Fully Cully is still one of my own like personal favorite soundtracks of all time. And I know a lot of people have, have really loved owning that. Uh, Attack on Titan most recently, season one soundtrack went out the door recently. That is, you know, fantastic stuff. Um, and also a silent voice, which is a really great film that has a, I think, an underrated soundtrack. It's a really good. I, I enjoy just sitting back and chilling out listening to that one, quite honestly. Um, but as you mentioned, we we do have some some vinyl plans for next year, of course. Um, so I guess we should start with season two of Attack on Titan because we will be continuing down that path, and I believe we can talk a little bit about that today. Yeah, we can indeed. Um, so this one's slightly different to the last season in the sense that there's actually a lot more soundtrack available for the, for the second season than the first one. So basically what we've got this time is a deluxe edition with everything from the season in it. So on the, the, the original soundtrack release, there were two CDs worth of content basically. So we've got in the deluxe edition a full five vinyls of everything. Whereas the, like the standard edition this time is still free vinyls and it's still at the same price as the season one vinyl, but for the standard edition, but it's only got the three vinyls with the, the first soundtracks worth of data basically on it and a little bit of a bonus. Mm. So, so yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of the, the important distinction and, and why we went for the kind of standard and deluxe model with season one, yeah. because we saw this coming down the line that obviously the later seasons do have a lot more music, so thus you need more vinyl. And obviously in terms of price points and kind of what makes sense, you know, we wanted to offer a, a reasonably priced version for people who just want the core soundtrack. But obviously if you're a massive Attack on Titan fan or a massive fan of the soundtrack or a massive fan of um, Sauna Hiliyuki, then you, you'll want the deluxe edition because then you get everything. And if you've seen or already bought our season one deluxe edition, you'll have a decent idea of, of what the, the packaging looks like. Um, and of course you can see what our season two deluxe edition looks like on the screen right now. So hopefully that has you, uh, has you excited because that will be coming early in 2021. Yeah, and it'll be... Like it's a really nice chance for us to, to continue the, the soundtracks consistently as well. So the designs, like the soundtrack designs are beautiful across the, the chain and we kind of match that with the vinyl release. So obviously if you bought the standard edition of part one, the standard of part two will match, like will match what's on your shelf perfectly as well. So that's kind of a, like it's the bare minimum in my opinion, but it is a very, like a very nice thing and reassuring thing to, to see on your shelf aesthetically, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we, we do know that uh, that our, our fans do like consistency on their shelves, so we, we do try to accommodate that wherever <laughs> we can. We do indeed. So uh, moving on from that, we do have one other vinyl um, release to talk about, which I'm very excited about this one because I think it's a little bit of a, a curveball. People might not be expecting it, um, and it's 
it's going to be kind of amazing, I think. So I, I won't spoil it. I shall let Andrew take the take the credit because this is another one of his uh, his wonderful production children that I'm sure he's equally excited to reveal to people. I am indeed, and it's uh, but we'll be releasing Beast Stars on vinyl, um, like the original soundtrack for Beast Stars, rather in like kind of mid to late Q1 of 2021. Like at this point, the details are still a little bit under wraps because it's still in the like the approval process, but we do have something special planned is what I can can definitely tell you just now. So all going well at just in time for season two, you'll be able to own the, the soundtrack like at home on vinyl. Mm, fantastic. Very exciting stuff. And yeah, more details to follow as, as soon as we can uh, we can reveal them. And yeah, I, I know a lot of people are, are big fans of, of Beastars and the, the anime adaptation is, is amazing. Um, if you watch the uh, our first Cloud Match 3 back in May, you will have seen some, some really great deep dives into that with, with Orange, who produced it. Um, and the soundtrack is, is a really major component of that. So yeah. I'm very much looking forward to uh, showing that one off to people. I mean, the soundtrack's really, really beautiful as well. It reminds me, like, there's tracks in it which remind me of uh, Blood Blockade Battlefront's first season soundtrack as well. There's just that kind of, like, where there are vocal tracks, it's absolutely, like I'd say, there's not a huge amount of them on the, the soundtrack, but there's enough of them where it's it's noticeable. Like, and the whole soundtrack, like, really, like, it... Yeah, like, when I was watching the show on Netflix, it just really works. It's kind of nice, atmospheric... There's a, a good little, like a good, a good twist of jazz in there as well, which is just like, it's ideal for me personally on it. So I'm looking forward to sharing it with people very soon. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, again, more details soon. Um, but as promised, you know, we, we did promise that you can ask Andrew anything. And so we should make good on that. But uh, before we uh, we take a very quick break and come back for uh, for uh, this Q&A session, uh, do you have any final messages for people, Andrew? Uh, just that we're really excited to be to show people what we have coming up in 2021. It's been a, an interesting year for, I think, for everyone in one way or another, but like we've been working kind of tirelessly in the background here on like on a lot of different products and like, and just things we really want to show people. So it's, it's really exciting to have this kind of chance to show people stuff. And yeah, like can't wait to talk more about it and answer people's questions in a minute or two. Absolutely, yes, we will have a lot to talk about across the course of 2021, but first let's uh, let's cut to our, our Q&A. So uh, we'll take a very quick break and we will be back very soon. Catch you soon. Okay then, I guess we, we might need to give some of you people a second after that Beastars vinyl announcement to recover. Uh, but while you're doing that, uh, we are back and we've been promising this all weekend and now now is the time. Now is the time to ask the Anime Limited CEO, Andrew Partridge, anything. So, Andrew, are you prepared? Uh, as prepared as I'm going to be. Let's give it a shot. Cool. Well, we have <laughs> had plenty of questions coming in already, and I suspect they will continue to come in thick and fast. So I guess we'll just uh, get cracking. Sure. Um, starting out with uh, Bistan R1 on Twitter, who asks, uh, can you give us any new info on what's happening with the Kakiguri release? Uh, sure can. So we're just in the last stages of sorting out uh, materials now, so I'd expect it will come out in probably Q2 2021 just now, like or Q3. The, the main core issue of that kind of title is with Netflix, access to the other materials like the dub track especially is more complicated than dealing with a regular like anime company. So there's all sorts of considerations we have to, to take in mind on that, which is why it's actually taken so long in this case, because you'll see there's no US licensee for it as well yet. So like that's been part of the complication. Mm. Cool. So next question from Martin Martz on YouTube. With the upcoming release of SubCity 080808 on Blu-ray, do you have any plans to release any more vintage classics in the future? Uh, yes, we do, in fact. And there's a few coming up announcement-wise in the future just now. In um, the near future as well, may I add. Um, like, we're big fans of, like, classic anime. So there's, which is shown through not just what we do at Anime Limited, but what I do as a, a festival director at Scott and Loves Anime as well. I mean, we've screened a lot of classics over the years. Um, 
so yeah, like I more to look forward to beyond Cyber City 08 over there. Mm, excellent. So uh, next question from uh, GG, also in the YouTube chats. Um, on the 19th of January next year, uh, we're releasing Bartender. Obviously, that was a bit of a, a white whale for you to, to chase down a license. Do, do you have another white whale that is your, your new pursuit? Uh, it's not so much of a, it's not like I pursue one and then move on to the next <laughs> one. And the licensing, the trouble is that there's a lot of those projects. It's basically a treasure chest of projects where, like, to make it like to make it happen, you're always you're always asking questions. Basically, actually, one of those which has been on my and Jonathan Clements's list for a long time, like to come back, has actually just resurfaced. Um, so I'm super happy. There's actually one or two licenses like that next year for me, which we've already sorted. So I mean, I, I guess I've actually caught a few white whales recently for my my own interest. Um, but yeah, like there are some others. I don't want to talk about them yet in case I jinx it, though, <laughs> as discussions are still ongoing for a few of those titles. So, yeah. Some exciting teasing there. And uh, yeah, there, there's definitely some exciting stuff in the pipeline. So uh, next question, on a slightly less cheerful note, also from <laughs> GG. Um, will the escalation of high street failures from COVID create a problem for sales of physical media, especially when it comes to reaching new audiences? Uh, mixed response to that. The answer is less than you would think. Uh, the high street for home video has been dying for a long time, which is really painful for us in the entertainment industry to see. In fact, it's why we've been so supportive of HMV, for example, through its troubles in 20, like beginning of 2020, actually, like 2019, it, like sorry, 2019, in fact, I'm gonna lose track of time now, apparently. Um, like we've been really supportive of HMV throughout basically because you need more than just a supermarket option where there's only a very limited amount of home video to go to and browse in person. Um, it doesn't really cater to collectors product though, which is our main area by and large. Um, so ultimately online was a large part of our business anyway and that's been accelerated by the, the current COVID situation. What will be a problem globally though is Brexit like on that frontier, that's actually going to have a high, much higher impact for home entertainment, I think, than, than COVID on many, many levels, like for, for home video specifically anyway. Mm. I mean, what sort of effects are we expecting, which was another question in the chat, kind of like, possibly hard to say, but you know, what, what's the sort of impact we expect to see there? Uh, no, actually, there's some which are really, really obvious, which is the prices are going to go up in the next year. Uh, for example, I'm already seeing added cost for just even just shipping into the UK because we now need to use customs clearance companies because the paperwork is going to be so complicated that it has to be and it has to be done every time it comes into the UK now. But it's just going to be a cumulative effect that combined with currency weakness, combined with the general like product will take longer to come into the UK from January first onwards like stock will be stuck in holding areas until things are sorted out. And the answer, the, the question is there is when will it be sorted out? No one knows. And every time, so every time we get a call from like companies surveying for the government on Brexit impact, they start the phone call to me with, we can't talk about our opinions on this situation. And by the end of a call, they're like, oh no, it's not really looking very good, is it? <laughs> it's like, it, the trouble is there's a huge amount of commercial problems just now and the, the end result is that unfortunately to keep businesses, it's not just us either, but to keep businesses running very likely at, by the end of 2021 in general home entertainment prices will have gone up. Mm. We're going to fight that obviously as long as we can on it because we don't, it's not like it's a choice, it's not like we make more money profit wise by doing that. <laughs> But it gets to a point where you can't eat the loss anymore on it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's a cheerful one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, mo moving on onwards and, and, and upwards, I guess. Um, question on Twitter from uh, Rekia Oyashi. When will we have any news about March Comes In Like a Lion season two? Uh, when I have any news myself, <laughs> it's the answer. I, I love March Came In Like a Lion and it's. Uh, like I really want to to go back to season two. It's just there's a long list of other projects we have to get out the door first before I start chasing 
like kind of what is effectively more of a passion project than a high commercial pro potential project for us. But it is still one very much on our radar and we've not abandoned it. So stay tuned on that frontier. And I believe in the meantime, it's still viewable on Crunchyroll as well. So there's still a place to at least watch its subtitle just now. Yeah. Uh, so next up, also from Twitter, Aaliyah Moran asks, any chance of a Blu-ray Excel saga release? What I wouldn't give for that <laughs> as a possibility. I think right now I would settle for even the DVD version of it. It's a, like, so to do a Blu-ray version, there's one of two things you need. Either Japan has to okay you to upscale it, which is, like, it's not for everyone on approvals there. And that's where Cyber City Oedo sat, for example, because there, wasn't a, there weren't any HD materials on hand. Or HD materials have been made in Japan and they're okay sharing them with you. Now, the latter option isn't an option just now. There is no Blu-ray release in Japan for Excel Saga, sadly. Um, and it's a show that's very close to my heart as well. I remember it from the ADD days, the release on DVD, for example, back when it, like, it came in like six parts. But like, never say never on it. It's one, it, that is perhaps one of the white whales for me on it, personally. It's one we would love to bring back, and we would love to do it in Blu-ray if we could, but right now, Blu-ray seems pretty unlikely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, next up is, uh, let me go through this list, it's growing by, by the moment. Um, uh, from, from Joshua Watts on Twitter, um, international co-productions are on the rise, but do you think Anime Limited will ever join that trend? It's a, like, that's an interesting question on it. Honestly speaking, like, I don't know. I mean, the Anime Limited's goal is to promote, like, the best of Japanese animation and to raise the profiles of creators. So if the best way for us to do that is to join a committee, then sure, absolutely. Um, I'm not particularly enamored with the idea just for the kudos of it, though, either. So it would have to be something where we thought we could bring something to the table. And that thing is normally money, like in that kind of situation. But you never know, in short. It's something we wouldn't say no to, but it would have to be the right project. Uh, so a question in the chat from uh, Stuart Claw, which is an interesting one, as uh, we've, uh, we are currently taking pre-orders for five centimeters per second uh, as a steel still book blu-ray um alongside Zavi. so um a question here um how do you decide which uh, editions you sell yourselves and what you sell via suppliers such as Zavi? um it really varies from project to project ultimately for us um sometimes it's about like it's about simple commercials if it's going to be difficult to make back the money potentially direct from our website only and you need a wider audience. So for example, Steelbooks, where Zabi has carved a market for themselves, then that's like that's one thing. The shop has kind of it used to also be because you know we needed a wider audience of consumers, but our shop's kind of grown over the last year exponentially, and like the last two years really. And so now with ultimate editions, we would probably consider whether to do it just direct through all the anime.com or with a partner like Zabi. We we really love working with them though, so it's it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis. There's no hard and fast rule for each one, if that makes sense. Hmm. Uh, so next up, um, from RJ, the anime figure guy in the chat. As you manage to get a lot of the people who are involved with the Little Witch Academia anime uh, over to MCM a few years back, are there any plans to try and license any of Little Witch Academia from the UK? Yeah, I would love to do that. I, it's not, I've got no news on it just now. But never say never, I think, again, on that one. Like, we're huge fans of Studio Trigger as a whole, and we have a very long-standing relationship with them. And, like, I'm a big fan of, like, Little Witch Academia, both the OVAs and, like, the TV series. So it would be a dream come true for me to do it. Excellent. Um, and also continuing then the, the licensing train uh, from uh, Peter uh, at Ptrans on Twitter. Uh, with all the anime licensing, both the Persona 3 anime movies and Persona 5, we'll also look to acquire the license to Persona 4, which was previously distributed by Kaze. Uh, like, I do really like Persona 4 animation. So, uh, actually, in fact, funny, funny story, I actually licensed it the first time around at Kaze. So continuing my own trend, I would love to license it for a second time and pay for it all over again. 
Um, I don't know yet, though, is the answer, because there's a lot of titles which are current. Basically, titles work on a sort of cycle basis. So, like, you license a title, and then you have a, a period of time afterwards to use them, and then they either lapse back to the, the license holder, or you renew them. And the, the, the series of, like, the series like Persona 4 come in the right time frame now to be in a renewal cycle, basically, at the end of it. So it depends on if they get renewed by the current licensee, which would be Kaze in the, the UK, or if they lapse back. If they lapse back, we will definitely look at going for it, you know? But it's really, you know, the person who had it first, like, it's only right that they get the first shot at renewing it, you know? Uh, so next up is from uh, Philip W, who asks, uh, any chance of some of the French or the anime releases coming to the UK, staring at Cobra and Nobody's Boy <laughs> Remy right now, dot, dot, dot. Uh, never seen never. I'm the only, like, hiccup there is I know that they've been released in the past in the US. And, like, Cobra's maybe, maybe has worked okay, but, like, a lot of the, that classic nostalgia area stuff from TMS is great and like we've, we've enjoyed releasing it in France, but I think the amount of cost to BBFC it and then to release it does provide a, a bit of a conundrum for us. So like, I mean, for me personally as well, Cat Size would be another one I would love to do, but the, like preferably with the French opening as well, because it's <laughs> a particularly catchy song for me, the period, but like, the trouble is just about commercials on it. It's fine when it's already, if it's a classic show that's already got BBFC that can be just applied for a transfer, that's one thing. But if it doesn't, then it really comes down to will, will effectively you be able to place it somewhere digitally or on television? And will you be able to sell like a normal number of copies at least to, to make the money back? And with nostalgia titles, it can be a bit of a gamble, to be honest. But again, never say never, especially with something like Cobra. I mean, I know it's the, the 4K version of the movie now in the US um, from the, the great Justin Savakas. I don't know if he's on on chat today, but hello, if so. But so yeah, you never know. Uh, so next up, again, in the YouTube chat from Philip Ngui. Um, I need a very precise answer for this one, Andrew. How many Gundam releases are you going to release next year? Um, more than one less than all of the remaining ones. <laughs> um, yeah. Honestly, it depends on a few different factors. There's a lot of really cool projects for, for Gundam that we've not yet done. I mean, my personal favorite still that we've not yet done is 08 MS team, but there's a bunch of other ones as well there. I, I, I think Keith will never stop hassling me until we do G Gundam, for example. But like, Really, it, like that, those aren't commitments, by the way, on it particularly. But there's a lot of projects like that. But there's also some really cool stuff coming up, like Halfway's Flash looks really cool, for example. Um, and yeah, like so. I mean, there will be a consistent stream of Gundam next year again. Maybe not quite as compressed into one period of time as this year, but like there will be a consistent stream again next year, basically. Yeah, watch this space. Uh, so next up in the chat from AHA Lambda 101, as media increasingly moves to digital from physical, would you release more of your releases digitally, e.g. on iTunes, uh, where the anime selection currently is very small? Uh, we definitely consider it. We're looking at it on a case-by-case -case basis. So for film, we're going back through and catching up on our catalogue. So you'll see a lot of stuff more recently from us, like Promare, like uh, Weathering With You, etc. They're all popping up on iTunes and Amazon, etc. The question is really for TV series. And TV series historically outside of things like Cowboy Bebop, for example, like, this, like classic titles, like don't tend to perform super well versus the cost to put them up online. For, for, di for ES, in this case, digital means EST. Like in terms of digital, we tend to put our content on a wide number of platforms otherwise. So there's places like All4, there's places like um, like Crunchyroll, for example, as well. And currently, there's a good chunk of stuff we put up on um, Amazon Prime Video as well, like if you're a Prime subscriber. Um, so like we, we do tend to place content as widely as we can for people who are subscribers, um, like of different platforms there. But like for EST, it's kind of a more, which is like iTunes, Amazon Prime Rental, 
and like Google Play, et cetera. It's kind of more hit and miss for us. So two questions here that I'm going to kind of pull together because they're on a similar track uh, from uh, Ice Climber and Zero One Habo in the chat respectively. Uh, firstly, how successful has the all four partnership been one year on? And secondly, any plans to extend the range of anime on all four? So in terms of success, what I would say is that anime is still on all four. Now, all, like Channel 4 as a whole as a group are not, you know, they, they're, like, they're not going to just leave stuff sitting there if it's not doing anything for them like on it. Um, is it doing gangbusters? I'm not sure. I've not had a chance to catch up with them. So they've been like everyone a little bit busy just now during the uh, the COVID time. But the last time I spoke to, they were happy with how it was doing. And like the real purpose of all four is less. And like, it's, I don't want to say it's, it's less for the people on this chat just now, like on this, like in this panel just now, in so far as a lot of the people on the panel, like watching the panel, I would expect to be people who know where to watch anime already. Like, you know that Crunchyroll has anime, you know Funimation Now has anime, Netflix, even Amazon Prime, etc. you know? But, like, the goal of something like All Four is to catch people who are tuning in for something like Toonami, for example, Adult Swim, rather, like, on it. Like, watching, like, whatever's on Adult Swim at the time there, and right next to it is anime. And it's a way to, to engage that newer audience with the content. So it's like, it's great if people from the anime community are engaging with it as well. That's the dream, getting both sides in. But the real measure of success are how many new people are coming to it from saying, oh, I watched my first anime, like Cowboy Bebop or Tokyo Ghoul or Persona 5 on all four. And it's a little bit like, because it came out, like, like not so long ago, relatively speaking, you wouldn't have seen much of the, the new audience at conventions yet last year. This year, you physically couldn't see them. So the real question will be, as conventions return, probably end of next year or 2022, how many people there are showing up and saying, oh, yeah, I saw that on all four for the first, you know, and then I've, I've gotten into more anime since then. Mm -hmm. It's the real goal. But all in all, happy and, like, will we be extending it? We, we hope so, but it's, like, it's a little bit far away before we, we confirm that just now. But you should, like, you'll probably know in 2021 whether it's going to be extended further just now. So uh, it, it looks like the, the music lovers in the chat have picked themselves up off the floor after that piece. <laughs> that was an announcement because uh, Pixel Squid in the chat asks, uh, could we see any Studio Trigger Show OSTs on vinyl in the future? Uh, that is potentially likely, but I don't think it'll be from us in that situation. So... Like there's a lot like like with anime, like anime as a whole, there are a lot of different organizations who release music. And a lot of the trigger work is tied to to Aniplex, you know, Kill the Kill, Garen Lagan, I mean Garen Lagan being previous to it, but still the same group of people. Like even like Promare and such has that relate you know, like in Japan has that relationship, for example, with them, even if in internationally it was distributed by by other people being a film. So like there are like there is a company currently owned by like it's part of the Sony Music Group called Milan Records, like and they do like they like if anyone's gonna have a title from Aniplex, for example, it's most likely going to be them, which which is great because we love working with them as well in the UK. You know we're distributing a lot of the stuff they they have, so like I think it's I think it's unlikely that we won't see something from Studio Trigger in the future. So vinyl is kind of having a good resurgence now and it's like it's first wave for anime really you know in the west but like it's unlikely to be from us in that particular studio sadly mm. i wish i could though i would kill to to do a kill the kill soundtrack for example well, that was a deliberate pun but i'll take it <laughs> it was an accidental <laughs> but i can work on the, the, the act with real ones uh, so next up in the chat from mac tech gear uh, do you have any plans to release more sound euphonium content like season two and the latest movie We'd like to, but it's a little bit complicated for a, a few reasons just now. Um, so again, yeah, that's, that's in the, we would like to, but right now, no current plans. But if we could, for example, I would kill to do Liz and the Bluebird, for example. Um, and like the other seasons are like, are really worth releasing as well if we could. So watch a space, tell, tell friends who are also fans of Sound Euphonium to, to pester us as well, and you never know, you know? <laughs> so I, I, I'm pretty sure there's some international law that means I have to ask this question because it wouldn't be an industry panel without it. 
Will we get to see Sailor Moon on Blu-ray? <laughs> um, you know, like, I don't know the answer to that one, actually. For the first, like, the first licensing question, I don't have a good answer for in the UK. Like, there's been countless attempts, I think, to release it on Blu-ray in the UK, none of which have made it even close to the foreground. If, if we could, we would love to, though, and it's one we might, we'll definitely go back and look at again. Like and see if there's a possibility, you know. Cool. Uh, so next up from uh, Nezuko Kamado, uh, any updates on the Inuyasha release? Uh, yeah. So we're working on like on that just now. The like we have to offer our own version for a few different reasons. Um, so it's in progress just now. Like expect it kind of late Q1, early Q2 probably next year. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so next up, Primus Productions in the chat asked, uh, any chance of City Hunter as there was a new movie released recently? Uh, like again, with classic shows in France, I'm a huge fan of uh, City Hunter slash Nicky Larson. Um, another one we released when I was at Bandai, actually. It's a, a massive like collector's edition back then. So I would love to, I have nothing to talk about it just now, but it's one that's close to my heart from like from my past jobs as well. So yeah, like it's definitely one once we're, we're back through our backlog, I would definitely go back to look at, you know. Uh, so next up from Vincent Dante, uh, any plans to release Lupin the Third Part 5 in the UK or perhaps any of the previous parts? Uh, strong yes on releasing Part 5. Um, we don't have a date set yet, but it won't be so amazingly far in the future, I think, on that one. Um, we also have um, some other Lupin work on the go just now. Um, you might have seen it on, like, like out and about already, but like we do have, like the woman called Fujiko Mine coming up, like for example. Indeed, we do. And if you watched our screen anime panel earlier today, we also mentioned that uh, Lupin the Third, the first, oh, yeah. the CG film, will be uh, coming to UK in twenty twenty one as well. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. That one still reminds me a little bit of the, like the Peter Jackson Tintin movie. <laughs> like in terms of style, it's also why I fell in love with it. Yeah, it's yeah. like not quite as like photo real capture on it, but like was something about it which reminded me of that. Yeah, it's surprisingly good. Like uh, I think everyone's a little bit worried. Like, oh, can you make a CG Lupin film? And like, I feel like they've nailed it. So uh, I'm yeah. very excited to to see people and get them to watch that one. Same. Uh, so uh, back on the will you release train, uh, Tells <laughs> XQB asks, uh, do you plan to release recreators? That's a, an interesting question one. I'm not entirely sure what's happened to it since release. I, like I know where it is just now, like, and I know like the process with it, but like, I don't know why it's not been, like even in the US, it's not been released on home video yet, as far as I recall. Mm -hmm. So uh I'd like to, but I, I do like the series, so like you never know. Okay, and uh, also in a, in a similar vein, Brad Lad fifty six asks: uh, Any plans to release the original Vampire Hunter D film? At the moment, no. But like, there was a, a bunch of rights related issues on that at the time, which I think have cleared now. So, like, it's not impossible in the future, and I, like, it would be nice to have the complete, like, both Bat and Bloodlust in the release lineup. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, back on the, on the uh, the music train. Um, any chance you would license the Bleach OST? Uh, it's not impossible ever. I would love to to give that a shot. I believe it was done before once by I think Kaze released the, the soundtrack before, so like it's possible. Um, the question would be: Is vinyl possible or not? And that's like the the real like do or do not on if it's not possible to do a vinyl i would probably probably not do it at this stage because for cd only for example it's it's not necessarily worth a shot but if vinyl's available i would definitely be keen on it hmm. um from zero one habo in the chat um any ultimate editions planned in the future with unique items like the resin gate for the full metal alchemist ultimate edition um, it might not surprise you to know that I have some plans for, for Evangelion's Ultimate Edition for the TV series, which are a little bit not non-standard there on it. I can't talk about it yet because we are still in like in the design and approvals phase just now for that. 
But yeah, like I think you can assume that that's not going to be a standard product, you know? Yeah, indeed. Uh, so um, some people may have watched it as, as part of uh, Scotland Loves Anime's digital festival on uh, Screen Anime this past month, and perhaps this is why they're asking. Uh, Cloud Runner 64 asks, uh, are the Lupin movies, Jiggins Gravestone, uh, Fujiko's Light, and Germon's Blood Spray coming to, from you guys in the future? Well, like, it's, it's no surprise since we're doing The Woman Called Fujiko Mine, but it'll be the logical next step after that for us on it. So, like, stay tuned. I mean, once we're, we're done with, like, The Woman Called Fujiko Mine, it'll be very logical for us to move on to, to those OVAs, you know? Mm -hmm. So, a, a slightly more fun question here from Gigi in the chat. If you could requisition quote unquote one license from from another uk anime distributor not for financial gain but just to do something really cool with it which one would it be to do something really cool with that would have to be redline from manga <laughs> there you go like, finally I mean, we got finally we got redline into this panel excellent that's a, a bingo card item off the list <laughs> but no i mean like there's a few like that where we hold like that film's a, a really awesome film and that would just be fun to you know, if we could do kind of the equivalent of a like a limited run game style thing of just a one-off limited edition, that'd be really awesome. There's other ones where we have title, basically anything we have half or like or around that of the director's work and someone else has the other half, it'd be fun to do something with too. Like for example, Anime Limited holds 50% of the Satoshi Khan works just now in film and Manga Entertainment holds 50%. So it'd be really cool to put those two things together to do to do a kind of a complete set, for example. And it's not, it's never impossible on that kind of thing, you know? But like, I mean, those kind of ones are the most fun. I prefer to work on something where it's more collaborative than like just take something from someone else and do something cool. And like, it, it historically was a, a trend of that. You know, we worked with Manga UK to do, like when we did our Cowboy Bebop Ultimate to make sure we could include the movie, for example. So, like, there, there is a track, you never say never on that kind of thing, but it is certainly a project. I would love, I mean, Redline would be the top one on my list, though, if we could, could do it. So, uh, Owen the Madman on Twitter asks, uh, th this will be an interesting one to sum up in a couple of minutes, how does the process for obtaining licenses work? <laughs> um, that is a very varied, there's very various different answers for it. Sometimes it's very straightforward. Like for new content, it tends to be, if it's not being bought as kind of an original for like for Netflix or Crunchyroll or whatever there, or being invested on as a committee, it tends to be everyone bids on the same titles and like the winning bid gets the title. For, and it can, it can be various different things which sway that kind of bid. Sometimes it's about chasing down titles because a lot of these companies handle so many titles now per, per quarter but going back to catalog content is actually pretty tough unless you're drilling into them for particular titles. Like, and you're really, you're really chasing those titles every time you speak to them, you know? Um, and there's one or two where it had become a joke like that. And we've, you know, you get an answer eventually where it's like, yes, it's available again. And like, it's worth doing that. Um, for other licenses, it's just a case of right time, right place, or working with the right people to like, and it kind of, it comes up then, you know? Um, there's varying other ways as well, but those are kind of the three key ones I would summarize. Hmm. Uh, so uh, Austin Becker in the chat asks, uh, since you released ReZero season one, do you have any news regarding season two? Uh, I think it's got a very long time between the end of the first core and the second core, because I'm on the edge of my seat just now for what happens next. <laughs> um, and I'm really loving the fact that the, that season two as an arc, like in like first season was very much like multiple different arcs and you felt like it was like miniature versions of Groundhog Day. This one feels like one long Groundhog Day from episode one till whenever the, the season ends. Um, I don't have any news just now on licensing about it, but like it's one we're, we're super keen on and like we have season one here, so it wouldn't be a huge surprise for us to, to do something with it in the future. But Right now, nothing to announce, except I really want the next episode now, not whenever it starts off again. Yeah, so sometimes we have to suffer the same as everybody else waiting for these things. Yeah. Uh, so Bleach Girl Cosplay in the chat asks, uh, which anime has been the hardest to acquire the rights to? Uh, 
there's various different ones. I think the most recent one was probably Evangelion. Like it was out of print for so long in the English speaking world, it's a TV series. And that's, there's a reason for that, you know? And like, it's really, really great to see that it's like have that chance to release it, you know? Like now there's a lot of film projects as well, which have been like that as well. Um, I think like it's like hardest is a very variable word like as well on it because it's like is it hard in terms of negotiating it was it hard just because there was a lot of competition for it you know like it's a very open-ended question on it but yeah there, there are many difficulty levels to, to let something animate <laughs> is the, the, the short sure. answer um, so very important question here from Jaden550 in the chat. So when are we going to get another All the Anime t-shirt? My fifth anniversary one is wearing out. Well, it's okay, but it's not very long until the 10th anniversary at this point. I believe we're we're on year eight just now, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you know, like we're, we're counting down the clock till, till the 10th anniversary. So if you can hold out just a little bit longer, there'll definitely be another one. I don't yeah. think a year nine t-shirt really works. <laughs> but, you know, like, I mean, we're like... Definitely will be one for the 10th anniversary. I'm maybe we'll look at doing some in between as well. You never know. Yeah, wash it on a low temperature, just look after it for a while, and we'll, we'll get there in the end. Uh, so, uh, Sakaris in the chat asks any update on Connoisseur but season two and the subsequent film? Uh, yes, actually, season two, like I know the, the discs are being worked on just now all going well it'll be in a similar time frame to when like whenever discotheque releases in the US I know they at their last uh, streaming event they announced that they were doing season two working on season two just now so it won't be a big surprise that this one will be more in sync with them. Cool uh, so what else have we got here um, from Bakura23 in the chat would you consider releasing the live action Gundam film G Savior? Uh, I would consider it, but I think it's kind of one of those titles which may be lost in the the annals of time, basically, on it. Um, never Again, never say never on that one, but I don't think it's one of the Gundam titles I was referring to next year, though. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, that is fair. So uh, we've had... Uh, Tamaki Joker in the chat has, has spammed us with all sorts of uh, series <laughs> that they'd, they'd like to have licensed, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick out a couple of interesting ones from that list. Marmalade okay. Boy and Kari Kano. Oh, two very different ones there as well, in many ways. Um, Marmalade Boy, not sure what the, the situation is on that one just now. Um, like, we'll need to look into that one again for what the situation is. But for, for Kari Kano, super interested in it, obviously, given, like, I would love to have a, like, again, like, having a full collection of Anno Sans TV series would be amazing for me. That would be a dream come through as well there. Um, probably the closest you'll get to a white whale answer out to me from going back to the beginning of the talk as well today. <laughs> um, but, like, that, so, yeah, Kari Kano would be amazing, but Again, that's a bit of a complicated one just now, I think. I'd need to look into it, you know. Hmm, that is fair. So I, I think we're probably starting to wind things down now. So I'm going to ask this question from Cat Hall, who I feel like could probably have asked this question just in a work meeting. But anyway, um, if Andrew could release any type of anime limited merchandise, i.e. beer or ice cream, and see where, where her mind is going right now, what would it be? Uh, well, it'd be really fun to do some branded drinks bottles of some kind. Be it like beer, whiskey, soft drink, like doesn't really matter. I've seen some really cool stuff done over the years for promotion actually from from events before, like rebranded, like like rebranded soft drinks, energy drinks, etc. Um it'd be really fun to do something like something like that as a line of merchandise. Uh, like Japan's obviously very keen on the whiskey frontier. So there's been several whiskey like whiskey like tie-ins basically with um like i think it's one of the two it's either shueisha or shogakan who did like who did spin-off whiskeys from properties they, they've had um like for example so there's definitely something to be done there especially send a few samples over i suspect um that would be really fun i think to do though and it'd be fun designing the labels for that you know Mm, for, for sure. And I mean, if, if anyone was watching our Q&A yesterday, I did bring up the idea of Premier ice cream. So, you know, maybe maybe we can make that happen as well. Um, Spicy ice cream, you mean? <laughs> yeah, why, why not? Why not? Um, so I'll, I'll probably make this the last question from Kate the Mickey fan. Do you miss Comic Cons this year? 
Uh, yes, like surprisingly enough, it's like they've been such a hard coded element of what made not just anime limited, but my life in um, like basically my life before at Bandai and like at Kaze slash Viz Media Europe slash nowadays it's called Crunchyroll Europe. But like, um, yeah, like it's very weird to be in one place for a whole year basically, which has been been the case for me. I was like, uh, like after February time, I like I haven't traveled for work, which is the longest period of time I've not gone anywhere basically. And it's, it's weird not being able to see a lot of the normal faces we would see at events. Um, which is very valuable for us, apart from the fact that it's nice to hear what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong, both of which we hear in plenty measure at conventions. It's really valuable to, to just like get out there and be able to like to show people the products. There's not, as we talked about for high street retail before, there's no, like there's no easy way to showcase what we do collector's edition wise at a retail store, especially for ultimate editions, for example. So conventions have been really cre critical for us to, I was going for key and ended up critical, but never mind. Um, but like, it's been super important for us to show you what's inside, like Full Metal Alchemist, like Cowboy Bebop. It's, it's great to see the pack shots online, but seeing an edition in, in person can make the difference between a purchase or no purchase, you know? So yeah, like we really do, like I personally really do miss it and like, at the same time, realistically speaking, I think next year is unlikely to have many conventions in it still, like physical wise. And don't worry, like it doesn't mean we're going to stop, do, you know, even when physical ones return, I think we really enjoyed doing Cloud Mad Suri. Like, so it may not change there, but like, I think we just have to see what happens over the next, the next year. We don't want to go back until it's like, it's safe for everyone to do so as well. So it's kind of a, a balancing act there, which we kind of discussed a lot over this year. So it was a constant, will we, won't we have events as the year went on. So like very long answer there for it, but the short answer is yes. Like I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we all miss all of you guys who are here in the chat, many of whom we have probably met at actual physical events in the past. So hopefully we will get to see you all again soon. Um, and so, yeah, I think that is all we have time for. Um, so for thank you for everybody for, for your questions. You, you certainly managed to barrage us for a good uh, a good 40 odd minutes there. Um, and I, I apologies to everything we didn't get to answer. Um, I did see some people asking about things like Card Cap Sakura and the like. Um, it's worth referring you to our panel yesterday where we had some really cool announcements and also uh, answered some more questions, including some stuff about Card Cap Sakura. Um, and as mentioned, also go back into the, the stream archive or the panel will go up in its own right soon uh, for our screen anime panel where we did reveal a whole bunch of 2021 uh, film licenses as well. So lots of cool stuff there, so make sure you check those out if you missed them earlier. Um, don't uh, go away, stick around for our final panel of the day because we have an extended uh, revolu Revolutionary Girl Utena interview, which is absolutely fantastic. You won't want to miss that. Um, so stick around for that, but uh, for now, um, thank you very much, Andrew, for taking the time to answer all of these questions, and uh, we will be back after these messages.